to be able to say, um, you know, we're going deep into the bubble, but I can't say that anymore. Thank God we're not going into the bubble. No, I mean, all, all the focus is um, on playoffs. Every, everyone knows how, how important you, what we've been through over the last couple of years and what we've been through this season. Um, you have to give credit to our coach. I mean, imagine coming into a new system. You've got a week or so to put your systems in place. Uh, lots of issues with COVID, injuries and the like. And we accomplished our goal. First goal is for the team to make the playoffs. And so that's where all of the focus is. No distractions, no out of the box discussions, just purely on the opponent in hand. Thank you, Ted. Sorry, Ava. Ted, nice to see you. Um, I guess I will continue with the theme of contract extensions. Uh, just wondering, I wanted to ask about Scott Brooks and if you feel he's done enough this year to warrant, I guess, coming back to the Wizards. Um, totally the same answer. I mean, we have such an important game tonight. Um, we want to win out. I mean, we want to win tonight. We want to win on Sunday. Um, and we'll then get into the play in and then we'll see what happens going into our season. But our focus is to try and continue this upswing. And, you know, we took a step back with the injury to Brad. Um, and, but you know, everyone in the organization is pleased that we've gotten this far and all the focus is on just getting into that play in. And I am an unabashed fan for the play in. I advocated um, long and hard last year for the play in when we're going into the bubble. Um, certainly the fans love it in each of the cities, uh, keeps interest in the fan base. And we have partners, media partners. I'm chairman of the NBA media committee. We are very close with our local RSN. Um, we owed a lot of games. And to be able to have a play in and keep fans interested and make for a team like us that's really come on strong, um, I think it's an exciting time. And I'm hoping that the play in becomes something that is. Um, an ongoing prospect for us. I think there's no tanking. There's no, um, there's no um, telling the fans, oh, you don't have to come to games. You don't have to watch on TV. Tonight's a really important game and that's where all the focus is. Thanks, Ted. Uh, Chris Miller. Thank you, Ted. Good morning. How are you? Good, Chris. Making it saucy and hot. Always keeping it spicy. But Breakfast I, I, too, spicy? On yeah, the always, caliente. Uh, I, since this is the first time we've really been able to talk to you all year, I kind of want to get your perspective on the 0-5 start, the COVID, the month of April, all of that. How are you and the ownership group able to kind of just navigate all of that and then to get to this point where tonight is really the most important game of the year? I think everyone in our organization and leadership tried to take the big picture in mind through this. Um, this has been a very, very trying time for society and for our country and the economy and the solace that you got from all of the work was watching the teams play. And, you know, what I've learned in my sports career is that overcoming adversity is the most important trait for a team to have success. And so every time there's been adversity put in front of you, you know, my job has been um, to get rid of my chief worrying officer hat and to be the voice of calm and reason and say, um, we can do this. We can take the step forward. And if we focus on what our goals are, and we start every season with every one of our teams, as we have to be, make the playoffs. Um, if we can make the playoffs, then you can aspire to 
winning a championship. If you can win a championship, you can bring your community closer together. And that social responsibility um, was additive to what we had to do now, which was keep our community, our employee base healthy. I'm very proud of the work that the leagues and our organization did in protecting um, our employees. We had to learn how to work remotely. I mean, that, that happened, you know, at the flip of uh, a button. It went from March till, till now. I mean, we just started playing with fans a couple of weeks ago, and tonight we get to play in front of 25% of our fans, the stress that that puts on the organization. And we've never had to, we've never been able to lose sight of the personal toll that this has taken on all of our people, um, our players, our coaching staffs, um, all of our employees, their mental health is been very, very important to us. So this has been the um, the rise to this occasion, making sure that you can balance and take care of um, everyone in the extended family, if you will. But we all worked on it. We all did it for this weekend, right? It's like, okay, the Mystics can kick off their season in their home arena. The Capitals have qualified for the playoffs and first playoff game tomorrow in front of fans. And I'm hoping quickly we can get to 100 percent of our fans and not only just for our fans who who want to come to the games and for our organization, but for the community. Just walk around the neighborhood. It's not the same. Right. And and we have a social responsibility to um, make the community boom again, feel positive, feel good about itself, give confidence to the small businesses and vendors around the city. So, so we have a lot going as an organization. And, um, but, you know, when the puck drops, when the ball gets thrown up, all of the focus is on that one deliverable, win this game. And, you know, we, we've learned how to do that organization. There's going to be a lot of noise, lots of talk. It's what's going to happen once you step on the court, what's going to happen on the ice. And so, you know, that's what we're trying to get everyone in that um, frame of mind that nothing bad happens when you win this game. And that's the focus. Great. So thanks. Uh, Barry, you look good. Hey Barry, um, nice hat. Thank you. Uh, you're not wearing it backwards to try. I can do that for you. Event. Yeah, there. So, COVID uh, haircut here. No, yeah. so I, I take another. Um, I take the opposite look at the OV contract. Thirteen years ago, you signed that, and at the time, you said it's kind of a risk, but it could end up, you know, being a bargain at, on the other side of it. It's ended up being kind of a bargain. What do you remember about? those negotiations and your expectations for the player and, and just how important he's been for this, you know, forever, basically. Um, Alex's first weekend here, he was dropped off in my house. Uh, and I told his mom, I said the same to Nick Backstrom's mom and dad that we will treat them like their family and we'll be honest and straightforward. And we know there's going to be times when people get upset, but as long as we communicate and you see kind of the body of work and trust that we can generate, um, and there's kind of a mutual respect and um, I'd say belief that we're building something great together. Um, I think it's similar with Brad. Um, it's similar with Elena, um, where they really believe in the organization, the community and the like. And so with Alex, it's why I'll never take him for granted. I never take our relationship for granted. I beg the fan base not to take Alex Ovechkin for granted, but we've delivered on what we said we would do. That, um, if you work closely with us, we'll, 
we'll have a great team. We have the best team, best record in the last 20 years. We've won a Stanley Cup. We want to win more Stanley Cups. We've built DC into a hockey town. We, um, Alex, buying into a women's soccer team to me was a, just a natural, organic expression of him saying, I love Washington, DC, and I love the community. And so, you know, I, it's like our ma my marriage. I have to work real hard every day on my marriage, but, you know, I trust my wife. I love my wife and vice versa. And so that's how I think the relationship is with with Alex and you know Alex is happy right we we he what he misses most is what we all miss we want it to be like it was we want all of the fans wearing red we want the neighborhood jumping with energy we want to um, be as far back to normal as we can but we also know that we've learned a lot about um, different things during this two years. And you know, if you've been reading my communiques, um, this is not a overnight thing. I've said this is a thousand days. It's really um, three full seasons for our organization and for the leagues to kind of pivot. And those thousand days will just get us back to where we were in 2019. And it's why you have to have built foundationally organizations that are, you know, the cliche built to last. And we've done that. Um, our organization across the board has been tested as much or more than any other organization in sports. We own our building in downtown DC. We have multiple teams where we're, we're um, under a microscope because we're in Washington, DC. And in all of that, you have to have high performing teams. And so I think if you, when you talk to the coach, you talk to folks, Sergey can give you the stats. You know, we, we gloss over, oh, we, we won the division six times or whatever it was. Oh, we've qualified for the playoffs seven times. It's hard to do that. Right, and, and it's wonderful that everyone has the expectation that it's just a check mark. We entered this season with the cap saying, this is the toughest group of teams in a division that we've ever seen. We were scared. That's why I think we played so hard and the players listened to the coach. I mean, there's really, really great teams in the division and you know, when the four teams in the playoffs and you're going to play, play through it two rounds. It's like, well, who do you want to play? Every team is really, really, really great. And, and so, so, you know, we've earned this right to do it. We'd like the focus to be on, on the, the playoffs. Um, and Alex knows that, you know, if he plays five more years, 10 more years, whatever it is, we've got his back. My commitment, our commitment to him is to continue to have great teams and we'll spend to the cap. We'll try to win championships. And that's what he's focused on because that'll be his legacy. Did you win a cup? Did you not win a cup? You know, I've had a conversation with Russell Westbrook. What more records can he win we have to continue to invest and make the Wizards championship caliber. Bradley Beal believes in that. Those are two great players. One is number one or number two in the league in scoring. The other one leads the league in, in assists. He just broke the all-time record in, in terms of um, uh, triple doubles. I look at the Mystics. We have two former MVPs on the team, and we're really committed to world-class athletic performance and building championship teams. And frankly, that's what you expect. That's what the community expects. And, you know, we, we are doing that. And I'm equally as excited about the prospects for the Mystics. I feel badly that we haven't been able to celebrate the championship from two years ago. I mean, we don't even, can't even talk about that really, but we never 
put the the up, up into the rafters the you know celebrate the championship we you know gave the rings and outside with masks on socially distanced and uh, but all of that we're leaving behind and we're focused on first game uh, Saturday afternoon. Uh, David Aldridge. Good morning, Ted. Hey, David. Um, a couple of questions. Um, is there any way to quantify the league-wide impact, both NBA and NHL, of the last 14 months uh, with virtually no fans in buildings? And do you believe that whether it's the Commissioner's Cup in the WNBA or the play-in tournament in the NBA, that there will be additional inventory going forward that can help alleviate some of the financial loss to owners and governors uh, in the next TV deals? Um, well, that's frankly what I've been mostly focused on. Um, I can't scout the players, I can't mm -hmm. coach the teams. Um, so my focus has been on how do we continue to pivot um, because a lot of the truths that we held, owning a building is positive. Um, you know, I, I wish I was uh, renting a building and then could go move in with my mom or dad and not pay the rent, right? But <laughs> I've been paying that mortgage atop of uh, right before the pandemic, all new seats, you know, new roof, new system. Right. And, and no, we take the long road, but that was a lot of money. I've been on a bastion and telling people our business was cut in half. Our goals were, were cut in half. Yeah. And, and this following year, even though we hope to play in front of 100% fans, we have to work through what's called make goods, right? We will have sponsors, suite holders, season ticket holders. So it's been a dramatic financial um, pounding on organizations like us. And we've tried to weather that be really good to our employees, really good to the players, but we've had to innovate. And so, you know, big article today in New York Times about Dapper Labs and NBA top shots. Well, we're investors there. I'm an investor mm -hmm. in Dapper. And we were pushing that because bricks and mortar were out during the pandemic digital, digital, global, global, we're in. Well, that was a great example. DraftKings, sports gaming and the like, very, very important. We've got this magnificent building that's just been reopened and soon we'll be able to have the first sport functioning sports book um, in a building and everyone's watching to see will this work? We know it's worked dramatically well um, during the off season with the little pop-up uh, sports book that William Hill created in our, in our lobby. So right. we've innovated here locally and you know it'll generate revenues, but it's a good metaphor for the rest of the league. And then eSports, we have to double down on. Um, and I have my NBA 2K trophy there. We just gave the rings out. Right. Well, as I've said to everybody, um, we could play last year. We can play in a studio and make it global. And advertisers and sponsors want to come and it's growing really, really fast. So what I've been pushing is global expansion, digital first, and it's just a matter of time before we can open locally. And as an entrepreneur, um, there seems to be more growth outside of Washington, D.C. globally. You know, I remind people, 8 billion people on the planet, 6 billion people connected to the web, 1 billion people saying they are avid fans or participants in 
basketball, second most uh, uh, second most popular sport. And so it's just, what are we, what are we saying? Woe is me for I can't play in front of fans in the building. Let's get busy and work and try to innovate and find new things. When we come back, we should be stronger, right? We should, we'll have these new programs in place and then we'll have, um, have our local businesses back open. And I think we'll be looked at the NBA, the NHL, the WNBA as being innovators and some of the best business and business leaders in all the business. Great, uh, Heather McDonough. Hi, Ted, Heather McDonough Hi. from NBC Floor. Good to see you, thanks, thanks for doing this. Um, the, obviously you touched on it, kind of a couple things I was thinking of, uh, certainly with the pandemic. I guess, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned as an owner over the course of the last year plus? And, you know, from your, the, the team, your, the teams that you own, the players, the coaches, even the fans in the community, what's your, kind of your biggest takeaways from what went on and now going forward? I think to thine own self be true. I mean, we, we had a lot of people counting on us, but then we had to take our cues and leads from the leagues and the leagues are different. Um, you know, NHL has Canada to think about and worry about. Um, each league has its own issues, mindset, economics, but we're, we have to be very, very tied in with the leagues. And then we had to be very, very tied in locally with our city. And, and you have to trust me, the public facing of listening and um, adding value, but we're really at their beck and call. Um, the mayor tells us to close the building, we close the building. Mayor tells us we can play with 10% of our fans, we'll do 10% of our fans. Uh, but with all of it, we had to be in the moment, um, health and safety and fiscal responsibility, right, to get through this. Um, and I think everyone um, believed in what we were doing. Um, there's a lot of our employees that we have to rebuild faith and trust and what's our mission. Um, I'm sure there's fans that we have to continue to embrace to say it's safe to come to games. It's safe to come into the city. Uh, we have to tell business people it's safe to invest in Washington DC. It's a lot of work to do to get through this pivot. And you know, there was a lot of joking going on this morning on, um, you know, people running up to a podium without a mask and say, okay, we're done, we're ready to go. And I, I wish it was that easy. Um, and, but it's a, I think it's a very optim, it's a time now for optimism and joy. And to me, nothing brought more joy to our community than winning sports teams. And we got exciting teams in the Caps and, and the Wizards. I mean, we made history with, with Russell Westbrook and no one could be in the arena to watch him play, right? I mean, that was a very unique time. I feel badly about that tonight. You know, we'll get a standing ovation. There'll be 5,000 people in the arena. And, and so we're all learning how to get through it but I want everyone looking this way now forward into what do we do listening to the city, listening to the leagues. And then next season, I'm hoping that we're quote unquote back to normal and left to our own devices to do what we think is best. Uh, Olivia Garvey. Hey Ted, how are you? Good morning. Hi. Um, I mean, I can't imagine the sleepless nights you've had this past year with your team, um, the overwhelming feelings that you've had having to deal with so many teams and so many employees. And as you've gone to Capital One Arena and watch the fans kind of trickle in, you know, see how excited they are, see how happy your players and coaches are have been uh, these past couple of weeks with the fans coming back. What has that feeling been for you personally 
you know, just watching everybody come back. I've had a couple of fun vignettes. Um, the other day at the Caps game in between the second and third period, I was walking around just to see who was out and there were two, um, two older women Caps fans. That would be mid seventies, early eighties wearing Caps jerseys. And um, they came over to me and kind of gave me the elbows. And then one lady said, no, 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 come here, give me a hug. And then the other lady said, I'm so happy. And she was dancing and her friend said, wait, wait, I'm not sure you're allowed to dance in Washington, DC. And so there was, there was a, a joy and fun that were back. People are coming up to me saying, can I take your picture? Can we do a selfie like the old times? And then there's the, do I keep my mask on? Can I take my mask off? I mean, we're, we're all starting to get back into it. Um, that's the thrill. That's where I'm an extrovert. I get my energy from. Um, extroverts really suffered during the pandemic too mentally, right? Because you get your energy from people and as effective as Zoom has been, it sucks energy, doesn't give you energy. That's what Zoom burnout is. And, you know, and my biggest concern is I love our city, I love our community. I'm sad about what downtown DC looks like. And, and you know, I still envision where it was and we all have to work to uh, reimagine what a city will be like, but we need to get those restaurants and bars and shopping and people feeling safe to come back in. And the other day I was watching our game and they were showing the outside of the arena during the finals. You know, with 20,000 people in the building and 50,000 people outside, and then they went to the parade. And it was like all there were were people close together, smiling, couldn't be happier. And I feel that nothing will bring the economy, our psyche, our spirit back than a long playoff run, than a championship, than great teams, and it'll redefine what the city stands for again, right? I mean, it called this district of champions. And, and so I'm hoping that we can play a central role uh, as, a, as a metaphor for the comeback, if you will, for the city and the community. Great. All right, unfortunately, we have time for just one more. So uh, Jen Hatfield. Hi, uh, Jen Hadfield here, the Mystics beat reporter for the next. I wanted to make sure to squeeze in one Mystics question. Great. Um, just curious to get your perspective on how you've seen awareness of or support for the team grow over the past few years and what you're planning to do this season to continue to increase that awareness and support. You know, it's, it's funny when, when something gets hot and blows up and it's discovered. Obviously we discovered the WNBA in women's sports before most and have been the most committed um, owners uh, probably in the league. We, we love the team. We treat the players and the organization uh, with the respect and investment that they deserve. And so you know, when I see the WNBA on the cover of Sports Illustrated, I see the huge inset inside the New York Times. I hope the Washington Post follows. I know that we are going to be doing a lot um, locally with our media partners at NBC and NBC Sports Washington. I see Google coming in and being a big investor. I see Amazon doing a deal, CBS doing a deal, ESPN uh, continuing to be a great partner. And, you know, it feels good, but we're like still this far in this 
in this big road to progress, um, I'm hopeful, I'm positive, and I don't want to complain about, well, we only have this much coverage. I want to say, thank you for giving us this much coverage, and then incrementally, incrementally grow it. So when we're, it's our 50th anniversary, I hope the mystics and the WNBA are as important as all the other leagues, but I feel that way about our esports investment. I, I would expect in 25 years that our, that our NBA 2K team and our Team Liquid esports investment will be equally as important simply because I think sports live events on a global basis will continue to grow. And, you know, I, I don't know why it took so long. We've been there, right? And, and, but it feels good. And I appreciate everyone that's on. If you would continue to follow um, Tina Charles, you know, I've never seen Tina Charles play in a Mystics uniform. I'm doing it tomorrow. I've spoken to Tina. We, we talked on the phone. We talked over Zoom, but tomorrow's going to be the first time I see her play. She's a, uh, a giant in the community. People have forgotten about her, right? Because she hasn't been on the court. She didn't play last year for, for COVID reasons. Um, Elena is spectacular. Natasha is a great, great player and a great personality. We, we, have, we have great opportunity to build our players up, to build our franchise up, and to build the community out at Saint and then for the league to um, also take its rightful place uh, along the other major sports leagues. All right, thank you everyone, appreciate it very much. Uh, I'm sure I'll see people tonight at the Wizards game, tomorrow at the Mystics game, and I'm gonna have to be a quick change artist. I'm trying to figure out what my wardrobe will be at each of the games uh, to be relevant and and on trend there. So look forward to seeing everybody. Thank you.